I should be a 20, so I'm good. But I'm going to take a couple, a couple of seconds to really drive this because it could really be a, a, a significant portion of what you're looking at with, uh, with percentages anyway. If they ask you this kind of question, if they want you to find that percentage of a specific number, one way, this is the way I want you to think about it. Percentages can always be written in an equation format where you have the part, what you would consider and think, hey, that's part of the whole, that's part of the total thing. Then you would divide that by the whole of the consideration that you're, uh, that you're in. And know that that's always equal to the percentage. Part divided by whole is equal to the percentage. So when they give you pieces like this, you just fill in the blanks with what they gave you. What is that? That's the percentage. And so I'm going to put that number in, remembering that when I you put percentages into an equation or into a formula, I always change it to a decimal. And that's accomplished by moving two places to the left, percentage to decimal. So if I put that decimal in the percentage place, and now I need to determine what did they give me? Did they give me part? of the whole in the situation, or do they give me the, to the total in the situation? So they want to know what's 47.25% of 1,102. Would that be the part, or would that be the whole? Well, that's actually the whole, and listen to this logic. 47%, is that the percentage that models the whole? No, that's the percentage that models the part. So they wouldn't give you the part, what they're giving you is the whole. So that is the number that you put in the whole position. And you're going to be solving for part. Well, algebraically, if something's being divided by a number, how do you undo that to get it by itself? That's right, you multiply. So, but filling in these places with what they give you will help you uh, with trust in the algebra format be able to, uh, to solve for um, what the what they're asking to percentages. Okay, so again, they'll give you some English. But I'm sure they'll give you an English paragraph, uh, the scenario. You need to be able to, to translate that into the math language of the percentage kind of equation. Okay, all right. So that's percentage. Where we are. Whew. How are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, I believe I think it's it, it's pretty encompassing. So just snap your seatbelt, pull it tight. And do the best you can I think you'll be fine. Checking my time. Uh, I'm at 22 and I'm supposed to be at 22. Man, what do you know about that? All right, polynomial expressions. Um, look at the things of polynomial expressions that they're talking about is uh, being able to take a paragraph again and translating it into the math equations that we study in polynomials. Polynomials again are kind of the upper end of the math curriculum, or math content that could be on this test. Uh, but know that that's something that they can have on there. Know the rules of adding like terms. Know how to subtract polynomials. Know how to uh, know how to multiply polynomials where you're distributing and collecting like terms. Know how to divide by long division. Know how to do synthetic. I mean, there's a lot of polynomial expressions and things that we're going to be. Uh, uh, I wouldn't expect them to go as far as okay, solving for zeros or solving for uh, the roots or the the x-intercepts of polynomials. And we wouldn't expect that. We wouldn't expect the graphs of polynomials, uh, but be able to, um, to work with the uh, algebraic expressions in ways of being able to simplify uh, those polynomial things. Uh, next thing is uh, real numbers, or uh, sorry, quadratic. Ah, keep getting in the wrong book. Um, Uh, quadratic equations. Uh, again, we can study that considerably in algebra at the end of algebra one, or or in the in the algebra functions or algebra two content. Uh, all the things about quadratics uh, be familiar with. We teach you here at the academy about throwing things up in the air and then modeling those passive acceleration due to gravity pulling down on things. Uh, quadratics again are the x squared plus b x plus c type of functions. Uh, that we do a considerable amount of work with uh, in there. Be able to factor, be able to find the solutions, the x-intercepts, the roots, the zeros, those things that we, that we teach. Um, 
They're going to relate it to, uh, to word problems. Be able to find the vertex. Uh, be able to find the writing in a vertex form, possibly. Doubt it, but they may have a vertex form uh, on there. But, but be as familiar with, oh, and does it open up or down? What determines that? Well, if A is positive, it opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. Those are things that we teach uh, about the quadratics that you need to be familiar with. Vertex has an x-coordinate that's negative B divided by A. Where that's an A, that's the B, that's the C. Those are linear, constant, and quadratic terms that we have in our quadratic uh, functions. Okay? Quadratic functions. 25, where am I at? Looking good, looking good. Uh, rates of change. Rates of change. Um, you know what that is? <laughs> rates of change? Your slopes of lines. Be able to determine what the slope of a line is in given two points. Be able to know that that's considered to be the rate of change. Like, um, how the distance is changing of a car traveling down the road it comes traveling at a constant speed. How's that distance changing? So what's the rate of that distance changing? Well, that's the slope of the line. Be familiar with those and being able to determine slopes and things of, uh, of algebra. Uh, of points. If I don't finish this test by 12, can I finish the rest of the next Friday? No. Or does the whole thing have to be finished? No. Finish in one sitting. Or well, the rational functions, uh, rational expressions, that'll be our next, uh, our next rational expressions would be uh, what we're doing next. So the expressions of what we're, um, uh, that's considered to be rational, know how to, to work with uh, expressions that are ratios of each other, of, of taking, um, let me find an example that would be good. Yeah, sort of like it's a slope. This is this is a ratio when you're when you're finding the the slope of of a line. Um, it's actually a ratio. It's a rational expression. You have some bad variables up on the top and some on the bottom. Um, be able to um, to look at that again. This is kind of the upper end of the math content. You could have rational expressions. Uh, that look like this. They give us an example of a problem uh, where you're looking at three rational expressions written in algebra. Variable x, and you're setting it as a, as a rational equation. And in this problem, they're asking which least common denominator can you use to simplify the expression? What's the common denominator in all these denominators? Okay. Well, like in elementary school, when you were asked to um, common denominator between 3 and 5, you could just multiply 3 and 5 to get it, right? Common denominator of rational expressions is very similar. I see that's an x minus 2, like a 5. And this is the same denominator, so same 5, same x minus 2. But how would I get a common denominator? Well, I would multiply them to find the common denominator, just like I would multiply in elementary school the 3 and the 5 to get the common denominator. So it's really the same kind of lesson. We just do it in algebraic terms. And this particular problem, then, what you could do is multiply or distribute that x through. That gets you x squared minus 2x. That is indeed one of the selections. Defining that common denominator. Familiarity of some kind of parts of the of a rational expressions. Again, that's kind of an upper level math content for this particular exam, but it could, they could offer some of that. Ratios and proportions. Um, we do a lot of ratios and proportions also in geometry with proportionality and similar shapes, uh, but they're going to have, they could have the algebra functions and graphs. They could, they could give some proportionalities to uh, uh, you have a two to three ratio of boys to girls. They tell you that you've got 30 boys in a room. You want to know, let me change that to 25. You want to know how many girls you got. Well, that sets up your proportion and then you've learned to cross multiply and divide to solve for that unknown. 
if you multiply properly. Dividing by three gives you that number of girls that you would have in that situation holding to that ratio. So those are things that uh, have ratios of proportionality. They give you pictures. They'll say, hey, if you reduce this by half, what would, you know, keeping proportionality of the sides, uh, what would that ratio, ratio be? Don't forget that we can also not just write ratios in this fraction bar, but we could also write it in that notation too. Just be familiar with that's kind of the lower end of the uh, content, so uh, you can pretty much expect that to be uh, in the case. So, on the test itself. Let's see, ratios and proportions. Next one I have is relations and functions. Uh, we talk about in algebra that a relation is a collection of dots, collection of ordered pairs, collection of coordinates in a two-dimensional world, typically, in this content. We don't go to the three-dimensional. So we can have uh, a list of ordered pairs, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and that's considered to be a relation. We then tell, teach you how to identify if a relation is a function or not. Is a relation a function? Well, what you do with the function, the way I teach it is, all x coordinates, or we call it the domain elements, all the x coordinates have to be monogamous. That's right, they date and are paired up with one and only one y coordinate. Now it doesn't say anything about the dating habits of the y's, but the x coordinates have to be monogamous. So this zero sitting in the x coordinate has to only be paired with zero as a y anywhere in the list of ordered pairs if it's given to you in this form. In this case, it is dating only with one's only with one, two's only with two, three's only with three. So the x coordinates all date one unique, uh, so that indeed is a function. So that's how we define functions uh, in the collection of ordered pairs. Here's another thing. If they give you the picture of the line, let's say that this is the picture of the function. It's a straight line. There's a vertical line test that you can use to determine if they give you the graph, whether a relation, this collection of ordered pairs, all those infinite points on that line, is it a functioning relation? Uh, the vertical line test tests that. If you take a vertical line and sweep it across the graph of the picture and it doesn't cross more than once, you're good. By the way, I want to back up uh, to define um, a non, sorry, a relation that's not functioning. So you, here you have zero as the x coordinate dating zero, but then you have zero as, a, as an x coordinate dating one at the same time. Man, that relation will blow up in everybody's face. It will not function. It is not a function. So think of it that way. Uh, if you have a picture, let me give you another graph of something that's not a function. If the graph looks something like this, vertical line test, does it cross it more than one place at a time? Any vertical line? Any vertical line at all? And it's not a function. Okay? So that's how we define relation. That's how we define function, uh, and being able to uh, work with no, it's uh, probably going to be on the test, um, relation and function concepts. Hey, how are we doing on time? Let's check the time, let's check the time. You got the time? I got the money, honey. Uh, let's see, so scientific notation. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well, it's supposed to be up there, so I'm going to have to schedule. Uh, scientific notation is something that we have to be able to, uh, to understand what it means. Uh, scientific notation allows us to take really big numbers, and write them in a notation that's a little less, um, a little smaller. Again, scientific notation is done this way. You change whatever number you have to a number between zero or between one and nine, one and 10, one and 10. 3.7 is between one and 10. I just moved the decimal. And however many decimals you have to move to get there is what you're gonna multiply times the power of 10. Three, six, nine, 10. So we can do that against positive 10 because the number started out really big, 37, whatever that is, billion. 
If the number starts out really small, we can do the same thing using scientific notation. That really small number, I'm going to change it to a number between 1 and 10, 6.7. But then I'm going to multiply it times the power of 10. Again, how many times I've moved a decimal to get there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But it's negative 12 because that number started out really small. They're probably going to ask you to be able to multiply those. Take two scientific numbers that they give you, scientific notation numbers. Be able to multiply them. So there's a process of that. Check it out. And know how to, to write numbers in scientific and know how to multiply them, uh, scientific numbers together. Okay, so how are we doing? Scientific, uh, got that done. It's supposed to be at 40. What time is it? Oh, dude, got lost. Five minute margin. Um, <coughs> excuse me, what are the concepts in algebra functions and graphs? <coughs> Solving linear equations. Very low end level of the math content for this SBA exam for a uh, 10th and 11th grade is solving uh, algebraic equations. We've already done one. Uh, if they give you an equation, they want you to have uh, uh, a working of x-intercepts, y-intercepts, how to find those if you're given two variable equations. Uh, y is equal to negative 4x plus 4. Be able to manipulate those symbols. But you can isolate that, excuse me, just a moment. And my finger still run this test way never went over. Then do the best you can. And so um, that is, uh, so now if we want to get to isolate y, if we can, we, this is not, I don't want negative y, I want positive. And uh, that's, the, uh, that's the equation we got. But we know that this is the slope, that's the x-intercept. If I would had it this form, I wanted to find the y-intercept. Uh, I could just plug in 0 for x and find it's negative 4. Here this tells me when I get into y intercept 4. Those are, those are linear equation concepts that we have studied and, and I'm probably insulting your intelligence. Most of your intelligence is by talking to you about this and being able to um, display those types of things with linear straight line graphs. Uh, again, I'm looking at it, I'm just looking at what I'm, what I'm seeing there talk about is uh, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, the slopes. Be familiar with those things. Uh, linear inequalities. The difference in uh, linear equations and linear inequalities is that you don't have an equal sign, but you've got an inequality symbol, like 2x plus 6 is greater than 10. That uh, to solve for the variable there, you'd solve it just like you would an equation, except you have to remember one small difference. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the equal sign. So again, I'm going to change that problem just briefly to demonstrate that one little nuance of difference between an inequality and an equation. Again, I'm going to collect like terms. I'm going to move that net at 6 to the other side, leaving two, negative 2x two on the left by itself, using the adding rule, I get 4. And now I don't have any more terms to collect that are like, so I use the next step, and that is divide. And I'm going to divide to get x by itself by negative 2. Well, when I divide by a negative, that changes the direction of my inequality symbol. So. That's the solution for that inequality. Again, it's just like an equation, just like a linear equation, but I have to remember to change the direction when I multiply or divide by a negative in that solution process. Uh, they, they will do some graphs, so I'll demonstrate the graph of this on a, on a, on a linear graph. Solutions where all x's on this graph is less than negative 2. I just demonstrate negative 2, and it's everything to the left, and they'll probably shade that in along with the arrowhead because it keeps going left forever. How do we communicate? Are we talking about including negative 2 in that set or not? If it's strictly less than or greater than, I think probably what they'll do is they'll circle it and not color it in. If it is less than and equal to or greater than and equal to, the difference in that graph 
is that it will be colored in. Uh, 